Hi, it's Wesley, and welcome to day 21 of International Zine Month. This is one of my very favorite prompts. It is Zine Library Day. Search for a zine library in your area and make plans to go someday or contact them about how to include your zine in their collection. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about what a zine library is, how a zine library operates, and um, a offer a few resources on zine libraries in general, and then go through a pretty rapid fire of a few zine libraries that I personally know and love very much. A zine library can be a collection of zines within uh, the collection of a larger institution, such as a public library may have a zine library collection within it, or an academic library, or a museum, or you know, some, some sort of larger institution may have a zine library, um, or it can be sort of a standalone organization that is created sort of for the, the sole purpose of being a zine library. Um, it can be a physical space where you can go and browse physical zines, um, or it can be a mobile physical space, like a, a book truck or a bicycle or tricycle or anything where people will take zines and and share them at multiple locations, like at schools, at farmers markets, at punk events, on the side of the road, anywhere. <laughs> um, it can be an all digital space, like uh, digital archive like the Queer Zine Archive Project is a zine library that, you know, scans and uploads zines for reading online. Um, and it can be any combination of these things. A zine library may have a physical space and a digital space. It may upload, scan and upload some or all of its materials for reading online or none of them. Um, it may have a permanent physical location with browsing hours, or it may be by appointment that people can sign up to go and browse at the zine library. It can, it can be any of those things. A zine library may allow you to check out zines and take them home with you as you would at a public library, um, or it may allow you to check out some zines but not all of them, or it may require that you, it may have zines available for in-person browsing only and not allow people to check them out and take them home, which I feel like especially for this medium where the materials are so small and thin and fragile that, you know, that makes sense for a lot of zine libraries to not allow um, taking home, but, you know, they will have browsing hours where you can go and read the collection in person. Some libraries will be staffed all by volunteers. Many zine libraries are like this, um, especially zine libraries that are not part of a larger institution, are usually staffed and run and maintained by people who are volunteering their time to this as a, as a passion project for the love of zines, trying to share them with the world, and that is I, I appreciate their work so much. Um, and some libraries may have some or all of their uh, members be paid employees. Um, I work at a public library, and so my official job is to be working on the teen reference desk and be, you know, my official job title is a reference librarian. Um, but I have a, this project of developing the zine library collection, and that is sort of a, you know, in addition to my regular work, so I do get paid for it, but, you know, I was not hired for the sole purpose of doing that. Um, I don't know of any examples right off the bat, but I'm sure that somewhere out there there is someone who is getting paid regular hours to maintain a zine library or a collection within a larger library, and that is the dream job. <laughs> so good for you! Zine librarians may or may not have library degrees. They may or may not be zine creators themselves. Like, there's a... As diverse as zine libraries are, 
zine librarians are infinitely more diverse. <laughs> the primary purpose of a zine library may differ. It may be more focused on the archival aspect of librarianship, where it's about preservation of zines for future generations. They may be working on a lot of, of uh, digitization projects. Um, it may be focused on um, archiving and amplifying the voices of a particular community. It may be um, trying to focus more on local zines, a lot of like public zine libraries or, or zine collections within public libraries will focus a lot on local creators. Um, it may be more for the sake of trying to get zines out there. It may be focused on education about zines. Like there can be a, a myriad of goals for individual zine libraries to have. And, you know, many zine libraries will have multiple goals as part of their, um, as part of their program, part of their project. Um, but I, if I had to try and sum up what a zine library or what like the vast, vast majority of zine libraries do is that they want to share zines with the public in one way or another. <laughs> and that's sort of what makes it the difference between a library and a collection or a library and an archive, you know, in, in sort of the strict sense, um, is that. I feel like zine libraries are really about making their zine collections accessible to the public in one way or another, whether that's, you know, just the local public, whether it is scanning and including it online, whether it's by appointment or checking out or whatever. The whole point of a zine library, I feel like, is to um, share zines with the public. I'm not going to talk too much about zine librarianship right now. If you are interested in that sort of thing, one, there's this really amazing resource called zinelibraries.info, and um, a lot of this is aimed more towards librarians, but it's definitely, most of it is understandable and still applicable to people who are not librarians too, so you should check that out. It has a lot of information about what a zine library is, and it has information like codes of ethics for zine librarians, um, primary goals, it has teaching resources, it has suggestions on cataloging and metadata, it has um, suggestions for the actual physical storage of your collection, and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's really cool. And uh, they also have a regularly updated blog where they keep people informed about zine events. So that is zinelibraries.info. And you should definitely check that out. If you are interested in learning more about what my experience is as a public zine librarian or as a public librarian who is working on developing a zine collection, I would be happy to create a video of that. If you have any specific questions, let me know, because I guess the thing is when you're so close to something, it's sometimes hard to know exactly how to talk about it or what would be most relevant for people, but I would definitely be more than happy to share some of my experiences. If you are interested in learning more about zine libraries or finding zine libraries that are near you, the very first place that you should check is your public library. Um, you may be surprised to find out that your public library or one in a system near you has a zine collection. Um, if not, I am sure that the reference librarians there would be able to help you find some local zine libraries. Um, some libraries will uh, do, especially within public library systems, they will do things called interlibrary loan. So I have actually been able to check out some zines from collections in other libraries in Massachusetts and get them sent to my library to pick up just like you would any other book. Um, because it's just part of the interlibrary loan system. So you should definitely talk to your public librarians. They will be able to help you find some zines and find some zine librarians. I will always extol the virtues of public libraries. And of course, if you want any help in trying to find um, some resources, I can do my best to help you, although I will not have nearly as much expertise as your 
public library will with your local area. If your local public library does not have a zine collection, then you might want to talk to your public librarians about the possibility of starting a zine collection. Um, most public libraries are very interested in fielding suggestions from the public, and um, if you wanted to, I'm sure that they would appreciate getting involved in the creation of one, um, volunteering your time to help set one up, and volunteering your expertise. So if there is a demand for a public uh, zine collection within your public library, then it, you know, it might be created. <laughs> so, you know, if there isn't one, don't feel like that's the end all, end all be all. You can always talk about the possibility of creating one. And of course, if you have a uh, decently sized <laughs> zine collection, then perhaps you would be interested in creating your own zine library of sorts, whether um, starting to scan and upload them and creating a digital zine library or um, creating a mobile zine library that you could bring to events like farmers markets and other events local to your area. Um, so there's always a lot of possibilities. The zine library at Barnard College has a really great list of uh, zine libraries across the world and in the United States. So I will go ahead and link that below. You can check there if they're if they happen to have a zine library listed near you. Some of the links are broken on this particular page, but if you see one that's near you or that you wanted to check out, you can probably just Google the name of it and find something about it. Um, and of course, you should talk to your local public librarian and they can help direct you places. This is not a complete list by any means. So now I just want to share a few zine libraries that I know and love. These are all based in the US, unfortunately, because that's where I am. Uh, some of these do have digital collections, though. The first one I have to share is the Denver Zine Library in Denver, Colorado. This is the very first zine library that I ever visited. I had no idea what a zine library was, what a zine was when I went there for the first time, and it was completely mind-blowing. I actually went there with a school group, uh, you know, a group of kids from my school, and it was just, <laughs> it was really amazing. They have over 20,000 zines in their library. Right now they are temporarily closed for COVID, but normally you can go in and browse and read and hang out at the zine library. And after you've been there a couple times, you can check out zines to take home and read with you and then return them like you would at a public library. The next one is the Independent Publishing Resource Center in Portland, Oregon, which has a collection of over 9,000 zines and self-published materials. They have it all cataloged and organized for uh, circulation for checkout or for browsing and reference at the location. It is definitely on my bucket list of zine-related places that I really want to visit when I get the chance. The next one I want to share is the Los Angeles Public Library's zine collection. Um, it is, you know, a zine collection that is available for checkout, like at most public libraries. And the reason that I wanted to highlight this one in particular is because the Los Angeles Public Library also does many zine workshops and events. So uh, right now, recently, they have been doing zine events online through Zoom that, as far as I know, anybody can sign up for. I believe the next one is August... Third or or something like that, but they have them semi weekly, and um, so you should definitely check that out. They do a lot of workshops and outreach and zine programs. So Los Angeles Public Library, <laughs> really great for zines. The next one that I have to share is Paper Cut Zine Library in Cambridge, Massachusetts. They have over sixteen thousand zines. They are currently closed for COVID, unfortunately, but they do have. Um, in, on their website, they have a catalog with links to a collection of digitally available zines, so you can go there and check some out now. Papercut also frequently hosts zine events, sometimes digital and sometimes in person, In you know, if you happen to be in the Boston area. 
The next one is Soapbox Community Print Shop and Zine Library in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They have 3,500 zines that are available for in-person browsing. They don't do checkouts, um, but they have them available for in-person browsing. And uh, they are funded by this community print shop that does a lot of has a lot of uh, screen printing materials and resources and uh, risograph printing and like a whole bunch of other printing things. So I don't know exactly how it works, but as far as I know, you contribute a small membership uh, donation and then you are able to use the materials. So if you're interested as a zine maker and you are in the Philadelphia area, then you should definitely check that out. And the last one that I have is the Sherwood Forest Zine Library in Austin, Texas. And they do have a physical location, but it is currently closed for COVID. But they have an absolutely huge collection of zines that they have made available online, and it is being continuously updated. They have uh, just ton of PDFs and zines that you can check out and read online. I refer to them all the time and I have nabbed a whole bunch of their zines that they have made digitally available for the Watertown Free Public Library's zine collection. So you should definitely check them out and it is probably, if you don't happen to live in any of the areas that I've mentioned, then this is probably what I would recommend as your first go-to for looking at for online and digitally available zines. And the free zine that I have to show off today is one that I found on the Queer Zine Archive Project. So it is a zine that I got from a zine library, and it is about zine libraries, so it is totally perfect. It is called DIY Zine Libraries, and it is by Cheyenne Neckmonster. And it is such a great little zine that talks about um, what a zine library is, how to get started on creating one. It has interviews with other zine librarians. So, you know, even if you aren't up for the challenge of creating your own zine library, it uh, has a lot of great information about zine librarians and what they do and how they operate. And it is just such a great informative little zine that has about everything that you would want to know for an introduction on zine libraries. And, you know, it is also very encouraging if you want to create one yourself. <laughs> so DIY zine libraries, you should definitely read that. It is on the Queer Zine Archive Project. And of course, I will link it below. That's it for today, and I am really looking forward to the next few days because I have a few little fun things planned. I have been really enjoying making this series, and I hope that you all have been enjoying watching them. I feel like if you are still with me on day 21, then you probably are enjoying them. Uh, so I will see you soon for the next installment. Bye.